Hey, what's up, Young Up Middle School? Welcome back to another Sunday Sermon. Hope you guys are all doing well. Now, let's go over a few announcements before we begin. After service, grab some lunch, come right back, because we will be having small group. And especially for um, our series through Proverbs, small group is very, very important. So I hope and I, I really, really wish that all of you guys come out and all of you guys participate, okay? Again, especially for Proverbs, small group is like really, really important. You're not going to get the, uh, the full experience of the book of Proverbs if you're not coming out to small group. Make sure you come out, okay? All right, we're going to have some record numbers this month. <laughs> Um, also, Wednesday night Bible study is still happening at 7.30s on Wednesdays. All right, we are going through the book of Numbers. Hopefully, you guys can come and join us for that as well. And finally, on Fridays, we still have FNF. Oh, I'm so sorry. Wednesday night Bible study is at 8 o'clock. Sorry. Friday night fellowship is at 7.30. So please come on out. Let's have some fun together. Um, these, uh, this maybe a couple, few, uh, no, like eight weeks now. Yeah, eight weeks it's going to be your teachers. They are going to be planning and uh, figuring out what we're doing on Friday night. So uh, hopefully you guys can come out and see what your teachers have in store for you guys. All right. And finally, if you're not getting any of my announcements, please make sure you sign up for my email list. Um, and yeah, with that, let us pray and begin. Lord, we ask for your spirit to come and open us up to your word today. May you work in us and speak through the Bible as we meditate on the message that you have prepared for your people. Give us a wisdom to understand and the character to apply what we learn to our walk with you. We thank you for your grace and in Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. All right, so last week was our first week in the book of Proverbs, okay? And we learned that the, Pro the book of Proverbs is a book that teaches us how to become wise. Proverbs teaches us that a wise person is someone who respects, loves, obeys, and honors God um, in their life. So, if you want to be a wise person who lives the same way that Jesus lived all the way back in the past, then you have to get to know who Jesus is and you have to get to know who God is, right? And you have to get to know what they care about and what they think about. So, with that being said, okay, that, that was our little recap for last week. We're going to really jump into the book of Proverbs um, fully today. But before that, I want to go over a little bit of um, explanation because the book of Proverbs is very different from other books of the Bible. It's, it's very different, okay? You see, the book of Proverbs... Uh, the book of Proverbs is filled with sayings and phrases that teach us how to live and how to act in very certain and specific situations, right? It's very different from the, from the rest of the books of the Bible in that they're a lot easier to understand, but also kind of harder to read sometimes. Um, and that's because of what a proverb is. You guys know that proverb is, is, is an English word and all these other nations and cultures and countries and ethnicities and, and culture, they all have their own proverbs, right? Um, that's because a proverb is literally just a phrase or a saying that gives wise advice, okay? In fact, um, some of my favorites, right? I'm, I'm going to give you some of my favorite English proverbs from America and also some of my favorite Korean proverbs, okay? Here we go. Some of my favorites. You get what you pay for. What does that mean, right? When you go to Walmart and you buy the Walmart Great Value cheese, cheese crackers, right, or the cheese snack versus the actual brand name Cheez-Its, well, you get what you pay for. The brand name Cheez-Its, way better, much better. So tasty, right? What about, what about out of sight, out of mind, right? You know that one friend that, you know, you used to be close with and you used to hang out a lot with, but then you don't really talk to them anymore? What happened? Well, did you notice that maybe you guys switch classes or you, you don't really uh, have any reason to meet each other anymore and you don't really talk because of that? Well, out of sight, out of mind. You don't see them, so you don't really think about them. That happens a lot. Or what about this one? Everyone's heard this one, right? Don't judge a book by its cover, right? That one's pretty easy, okay? It's like when you think that the quiet kid is, is not that good, so you... He gets picked last in basketball or something, but then you start playing and all of a sudden he's like busting out all these moves. You know, he's, he's crossing over everybody. He's like, he is just on fire, right? 
And you're like, how was he so good? Well, it's because you judged a book by his cover. You thought he wasn't good just because of how he looked or how he appeared, right? Or when somebody who always dresses in uh, brand name clothes and, and, you know, has a nice car and all this stuff and it t- turns out that his family's really poor, you know, that they're really struggling to, to, to get by. Don't judge a, good, a book by its cover, right? All right. This is my other last favorite one uh, from... from the American or English Proverbs, familiarity breeds contempt. This one's interesting. Familiarity breeds contempt. It means that the more you get to know somebody, the more reasons you have to not like them, <laughs> right? So for example, you probably know your family and your family probably knows you better than anyone else in the entire world. But who also makes you the most annoyed, the most angry, the most frustrated in the entire world? It's probably your family, your parents and your siblings. Why? Because you know them, because you grew up with them, because you've known them so well that it makes you really dislike them sometimes. Familiarity breeds contempt. Contempt means hate or, or dislike, right? So familiarity, so getting to know somebody, actually sometimes makes you like them a lot less, right? That could happen. Now, I want to share just two more. Okay, these are Korean ones. Korean ones. All right, here we go. <coughs> Pardon my butchered Korean pronunciation. Right, 공자 앞에서 문자 쓴다. Right, 공자 앞에서 문자 쓴다. What does that mean? Well, in the literal translation, it means that you are writing 한자 or or the uh, Korean, you know, Chinese characters in front of Confucius himself. Right, it's it's what you use when you say when you see somebody who is so proud and so prideful and arrogant that they don't listen to to experts. Right. It's like you won't teach a fish how to swim because fish have been swimming their whole life. So why would you try to teach Confucius how to write Chinese characters? He probably knows it way better than you do. But you've seen this happen a lot, right? You know, you've seen your siblings say something uh, to your parents and your parents are like, okay, I, obviously your parents know way better, right? I remember my youngest brother, when we were little, he, when my mom would be like, you have to go do your homework, he would go like, why don't you do your homework? <laughs> It was like the dumbest argument because, of course, they did their homework when they were my my brother's age. They know what homework is. It's not like they're having my brother do it because they don't know what homework is. But that's what he was doing, right? He was 공자 앞에서 문자 쓴다. That's what he was doing in front of my parents. And my other one, uh, 매도 먼저 맞는 게 낫다. 매도 먼저 매도 먼저 낫는 게 매도 먼저 맞는 게 낫다. Yeah, I'm sorry. 매도 먼저 맞는 게 낫다. All right, this means is that it is better to get hit. It's better to get 매마저 first. That means if you are, have to do something really difficult or hard, just get it over with, right? Just, just get hit first, and that's better than just waiting for, for yourself to get hit. So it's like with homework, why wait? Just get it over with, get it done, suffer for a little bit so that you can go and do whatever you want after, right after that, right? That, that's what that one means, all right? And the entire book of Proverbs, or, or most of it, is actually just filled with a lot of these types of wise sayings, but they're from, they're from God, okay? So in fact, many of these Proverbs actually from around the world are from the book of Proverbs. There are, there are very similar ones in the book of Proverbs, people who have come up with very similar ideas because they looked at the world and said, oh, you know, this is probably a smart way to live my life. You know, things like don't be lazy, right? <laughs> that's in the Proverbs, but that's also in like many other different cultures and, and places everywhere, right? Like the, what's the American one? Uh, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise, right? <laughs> or the early bird gets the worm. It's about like waking up early and working hard. Yeah, that's an American one. But that's in Proverbs. Why? Because... That's what it is. It's wisdom. It is supposed to be used in your daily life to help you become a wiser and more disciplined person. That's, that's what Proverbs is. And so since the book of Proverbs is so different, right, we're going to try something a little bit different for these sermons as well. Sunday sermons are going to be a little bit different. I'm going to read one proverb on Sundays for our sermon. I'm going to read one proverb. Then I'm going to explain what it means. And I'm going to try to give you guys an example or try to give you other examples of what it might be used for, right? Or why why would it be useful? Got it? Got it. Good. All right. Now, 
Let's read our proverb today. Right? This one actually comes from something called the easy to read version or the ERV. And honestly, guys, I highly recommend this version to you because I think it's so much easier and simpler for you guys to understand. Okay, it's, it's a translation of the Bible that they just used words that we are more used to seeing in everyday English. So I recommend you guys check it out. The ERV, you can Google it um, if you can, or if you want to, you can buy a Bible that's in the ERV, that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's on BibleGateway.com. It's in the Bible app on your phone. So please feel free to look at that. But yeah, the ERV is awesome. Um, anyway, let's read today's chapter or passage. It's from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 31 through 32. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 31 through 32. And this is, again, in the ERV. All right, let's read together. Don't envy those who are violent. Never choose to be like them. Such crooked people are disgusting to the Lord, but He is a friend to those who are good and honest. Amen. Well, this one seems pretty easy, right? Pretty straightforward. Don't be violent. So uh, don't hit other people. Don't kill anyone. Seems easy. Yeah, everyone's already doing that. No, 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 no. You guys already know me. You know me very well, right? This is not about not killing people, okay? This verse is actually talking about people who are dishonest. Dishonest. How do I know this? Well, in verse 32, it tells us what is the opposite of this violent person. It is an honest person. It is a good person. In the, in the uh, other translations, it says upright person, right? It's because back in those days, people who were strong, people who had power, people who were powerful and mighty, they used to hurt and kill other people in order to steal from them, right? To steal from people who are weaker. So a violent person from back then would actually be more of a selfish bully today. A selfish bully in our context. A, a person who is selfish and takes and takes and takes without caring about another person, right? Um, that is what violence here means. In the same way, when it says that crooked people are disgusting to the Lord, this verse is talking about people who lie or cheat to help themselves. Right? Because it's easy to be like, oh, I'll just never lie, right? No, but is it easy to say, I don't do those things to help myself, right? In the original Hebrew, verse 32 actually says that God will become friends. He will literally become friends. He will bring you into his confidence with those who are good and honest. What does that mean? What does that mean? It doesn't mean that people who are, you know, oh, I never tell lies and I always tell the truth. So uh, you're fat and uh, you're ugly. Like That is not what this passage is saying. That is not what this passage is saying. This passage is talking about good and honest people who are good and honest in their relationships with others. Okay? When they're dealings with others. That means the person the person who is a friend of God is somebody who is good and honest to other people. Okay? When we are being good and honest and fair with other people, that is when we are doing God's will in our lives. As you guys get older, many of you guys are going to wonder, you're going to pray, God, what do you want me to do with my life? And part of that secret is here. It's here in this verse, verse 32. Do you want to hear from God? Do you want to know what He wants you to do? how he wants you to live, well, be upright, be honest, be filled with integrity, be good, kind, thoughtful, generous in the way that you interact with your friends, your family, and even your enemies. Then, then God will reveal his will to you. So now that we understand this proverb, let's apply it to our lives. I think it's easy to think, oh, I'm not violent. I'm, I'm totally okay. I tell the truth most of the time. So this, this proverb doesn't mean anything to me. Well, you're not seeing how it applies to you because you're missing a big part of the whole proverb. This proverb and many others like it throughout the book of Proverbs is about how we interact with other people in our lives. So let me ask you this. How many of you guys have lied recently because you don't want to do something? that your parents asked you to do, that, that your teachers asked you to do, whatever. How many of you guys have cheated on a homework assignment recently? Or a test? Or whatever else? How many of you guys have gossiped or laughed at someone behind their back because they were different or strange? These are all methods of violence, of selfish bullying that we could do. What about you griefing someone in a video game? What about you raging at somebody in a video game? What about that? 
What about being a poor sport because somebody beat you? Or being a poor sport because you beat somebody else, rubbing it in their face? These are all unwise ways of living, you guys. If anybody just thinks about this for a little bit, right, and applies it to their lives, they can see, man, I don't, I don't live a very wise life. And that's the point of the book of Proverbs. It's supposed to point to us, it's supposed to reveal and show us where are we unwise in our lives. How are we unwise in terms of the way we deal with other people and interact with other people and in our relationships and in our decisions? It clearly reveals to us how imperfect we are. And then it teaches us the correct way, the wise way, the right way, the way of Jesus. Are there times in your life where you are tempted to be a person of violence? When you're tempted to wake up and choose violence, right? as you guys like to say. Someone who bullies, someone who is selfish or rages or steps on other people to get their own way. Or maybe you're a crooked person, someone who doesn't mind lying or cheating to get what they want. Whatever the case might be, I'd like you to think about it today. How might your life be different if you chose the way of Jesus instead of the way of foolishness and destruction? When was the last time you acted unwisely? How did that turn out? Did it turn out pretty bad? Did it turn out pretty good? Maybe. Maybe you got away with it. Maybe, maybe it, it ended up well anyway. I don't know. Whatever the case, just think about it. Reflect on it and think about it. And I want you guys to share about your experience during small group. Proverbs is different, you guys. This book is a wisdom book meaning it doesn't do anything for you unless you apply it. You have to use it in your life and learn from it. Otherwise, it means nothing. So I really hope that you guys participate during your discussions in small group. I know it might be hard to turn your mic on and talk about it. I know it might be hard to type out your thoughts, but please, 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 I encourage you guys, give it some thought and talk about it, share, share with one another so that you can share wisdom and grow together. If you want to be more like Christ, we got to do it together, you guys, in our groups. So I hope, I hope during Proverbs, especially during Proverbs, even if after Proverbs, you guys stop sharing, right? At least during Proverbs, I want every single one of you guys, please share with your teachers, share with your group, share with your friends, because that's how Proverbs is meant to be read. Okay, so let's give it some thought, right? I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to think about it. Um, and as we reflect, um, you know, maybe a minute or so, I will close us in prayer afterward. Okay, all right, let's pray. Jesus, as we study the book of Proverbs, I pray that you show us how much we need you. Please convict us of our foolishness, especially in light of your precious wisdom. I pray that our study through Proverbs will reveal how deeply flawed we are in our hearts. And make us wise, God, by putting your heart in us. Thank you, and in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, I'm excited. Super excited for the book of Proverbs. Super excited to see what God has in store for each of your small groups. So make sure you guys come out and participate, all right? So uh, stay tuned for praise, and then I will see you at 1 p.m. Bye, guys. Good morning, Young Knock Youth. It's good to, well, I would say it's good to see you guys, but I can't see any of you right now. And I know for a lot of you guys, I'm still a stranger, so... <laughs> But I'm glad you guys are joining us for Sunday morning worship this morning. Um, why don't we just pray together and then we'll get started. Spend a minute just by yourself uh, reflecting on Jesus, reflecting on what God has been speaking to you recently, what God has been doing um, in your life, and we'll start. And if you don't know what that is, if you feel like you haven't really, um, if God hasn't really been speaking to you recently, um, then just pray during this time that he would, that starting now in this service, um, that he would show up to you personally.
Father, I pray that as we come to you this morning, Lord, students, um, staff, God, pastors, that you would come and meet with us during the service, that you would come and remind us of your love for us, and that you would awaken our hearts to love you. God, we love so many other things. God, we're so uh, distracted. God, we uh, serve so many other idols. But, God, you're the only one who's worth worshiping, who's worth serving. So remind us of that today. Bring healing where there's brokenness. Bring peace where there's anxiety. Bring joy where there's hopelessness. Please be with us, God. We need you. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. So we bow our hearts. Bring your heart to him. things that we can count on with our God. One is that he's sovereign, which means that he's in complete control. And the other is that 
He's good. Those are two things that we can trust in and two things that can give us hope. looking for rest. Lord, we are so such a restless um, people, God, 
that our hearts are always wandering, our minds are always wandering. But God, we can't find rest anywhere else but in you. God, we can't find peace or joy or hope or love anywhere else but in you. God, everything else is just a cheap knockoff. So give us faith when it's hard to believe in you. God, give us faith because, Lord, it's easier to believe the things that are right in front of us, God, instead of uh, you uh, who often feel so far away. But as you speak to us through your word, God, I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to listen to um, what pastor has to say and that you would remind us, God, that you, Lord, are in control and that you are good, Lord, and that you deserve everything. God, you deserve all our lives because you gave your life for us first. So we thank you. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen.